Forget Europe. A brutal war ignites in the frozen north as the Soviet Union invades Finland. But amidst the chaos, a lone hunter emerges. Simo Heiha, a name whispered in fear by his enemies, racked up a body count so high it seemed impossible. Was he a man of unmatched skill or something more? Today, we delve into the legend of Simo Heiha, the deadliest sniper in history and the chilling nickname that sent shivers down enemy spines. In 1939, as the world's attention was fixated on the brewing conflict in Europe, the Soviet Union took advantage by invading Finland. But Finland had an unlikely hero emerge, Simo Heiha, a sniper. Heiha's lethal accuracy is credited with over 500 slayed enemies, a record that remains unmatched today. The fear he instilled in the Soviet ranks was legendary. Fighting amidst the snow-covered Finnish wilderness, Soviet soldiers never knew when Heiha's deadly aim might find them earning him the chilling nickname Belaya Smert, meaning White Death in Russian. However, Heha's comrades had a more personal nickname for him. They called him Taika Ampuria, which translates to Magic Shooter in Finnish. While it captured his incredible skill, it certainly lacked the intimidation factor of White Death. Estimates of Heha's wartime brilliance vary depending on the source. Some sources credit him with eliminating as many as 542 Soviet soldiers, while others claim at least 505. Regardless of the exact number, this makes him the deadliest sniper in recorded history. The closest documented sniper is Soviet sniper Ivan Sidorenko, who had an estimated 500 targets. Heha's actual hit count might be even higher. Heha's deadliness wasn't limited to the sniper rifle. There's evidence he may have also eliminated hundreds of enemy combatants with a submachine gun, potentially pushing his total kill count to a staggering 800. Regardless of the exact number, Heha's effectiveness is undeniable. As its name suggests, the Winter War was a brutal conflict confined to a single winter. This means Heha achieved his remarkable record in an incredibly short time frame. Achieving such a high number would require Heha to maintain an average daily hit rate of around five to six enemy soldiers. However, his lethality wasn't consistent. Records show some days were far more productive, with Heha credited with a chilling 40 confirmed hits in a single day, and two other days with impressive tallies of 25 and 20. Heha's effectiveness on the battlefield was undeniable. He was promoted from corporal to second lieutenant, the most significant jump in Finnish military history then. Heha achieved this incredible feat without the aid of a telescopic sight. He preferred the traditional iron sights on his rifle for two reasons. Scopes made him a bigger target, and they could glint in the sunlight, giving away his position. Heha wasn't a career soldier. His wartime service was just an extension of his mandatory one-year service completed in 1925. He participated in the Finnish Civil Guard, which is similar to the U.S. National Guard. He balanced his duties as a reservist with his civilian life as a hunter and farmer until the Soviet invasion in 1939 when he was called back to service. If his hunting prowess mirrored his wartime effectiveness, the local wildlife likely had a healthy respect for Heha's skills. After completing his mandatory service in 1925, Heha had the option to purchase his service weapon, a standard bolt-action rifle. He chose to keep the rifle and spent the next 15 years honing his marksmanship with it. Heha returned to duty with his trusted bolt-action rifle, opting against a more modern weapon with advanced optics. The harsh winter conditions, with temperatures plummeting to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 40 degrees Celsius, frequently caused malfunctions in the standard-issue rifles used by his comrades. However, Heha's well-maintained and familiar rifle proved reliable in the extreme cold. Despite his limited formal military training, Heha's exceptional marksmanship wasn't simply divine intervention, he honed his skills through years of competition as a sharpshooter. Growing up near a civil guard shooting range that hosted annual contests, Heha had ample opportunity to refine his marksmanship. Heha excelled in these competitions, amassing a collection of trophies. His talent was undeniable, evidenced by his ability to hit a target 16 times a minute at 500 feet, a feat requiring exceptional skill and focus. Heha was deployed to the Kola battlefield, where he and a mere 31 other Finnish soldiers faced a daunting task holding off a massive Soviet force of 4,000 troops. Despite being significantly outnumbered, Heha's unit held their ground for the entire winter. Several factors contributed to their success. Heha's exceptional marksmanship played a significant role, but the Finns also benefited from other advantages. The Soviet troops' bright green uniforms offered a stark contrast against the snow-covered landscape, making them easy targets. A lack of skilled leadership compounded the Soviet struggles. Joseph Stalin's brutal purges had eliminated many experienced officers, leaving the Soviet army with a leadership vacuum. 
Although the Soviets technically secured a victory, their gains were minimal, consisting of a narrow strip of border territory. Finland, on the other hand, remained largely intact. The Winter War proved to be a costly endeavor for the Soviets, resulting in nearly 400,000 casualties compared to Finland's 66,000. Heha defied conventional sniping tactics. While most snipers favor a prone position for reduced exposure, Heha opted to shoot from a sitting position, believing it offered him more excellent stability and accuracy. His small stature, barely over 5 feet tall, further aided his concealment. He would meticulously craft snowbanks as his hideouts and even hold snow in his mouth to prevent his breath from revealing his location. Heha employed other unconventional techniques to maintain his concealment. He would pack snow around the barrel of his rifle or even pour water on it, allowing it to freeze. This prevented the telltale puff of smoke from rising after a shot, which could give away his position. In another departure from traditional sniping tactics, Heha often targeted the center mass of his enemies rather than aiming for headshots. While this approach might not have garnered him high scores on online leaderboards, it proved undeniably effective in the brutal realities of war. Heha's reputation as a deadly sniper grew, eventually reaching the ears of Soviet commanders. Frustrated by his relentless effectiveness, they decided to take action. Since directly engaging Heha was nearly impossible, the Soviets resorted to shelling his general location with artillery, hoping to eliminate him or at least disrupt his operations. Frustrated by their artillery barrages, the Soviets deployed counter-snipers to neutralize Heha. However, Heha proved adept at outmaneuvering them, eliminating these threats with chilling efficiency. One day, misfortune struck Heha. An exploding bullet fired by a Soviet sniper tore through his jaw. One friend described the injury as half his head missing, but Heha clung to life. After undergoing days of complex reconstructive surgery, Heha regained consciousness only to discover the Winter War had already ended. Despite the severity of his injury, sustained in an era with limited medical advancements, Heha not only survived, but also went on to live a full life after World War II. He returned to his peaceful pursuits of hunting and farming. In 1961, the Finnish government awarded Heha a farm in recognition of his wartime service. He settled into a peaceful dog breeding and hunting life, even winning the Ruokalati Hunting Society's Game Cup five years in a row. Heha eventually moved to a small apartment in 1970 where he lived out his remaining years. He passed away peacefully in 2002 at the age of 96. Simo Heha's story is remarkable. He transitioned from a quiet farmer to the deadliest sniper in recorded history, credited with over 500 kills. Despite his wartime exploits, Heha preferred a life of peace and returned to his roots after the Winter War. He lived long witnessing significant historical events well into the 21st century. White Death's legacy as the deadliest sniper in history is undeniable. His wartime contributions were significant, and his skill as a marksman was exceptional. Heha's story offers a glimpse into the realities of war and the extraordinary individuals who emerged during the conflict. What do you think of the White Death? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below, and don't forget to explore our other videos featuring peculiar historical events.